so I have parents that's half Neanderthal, so I still have like his genes where I sweat. And I'm just big, no matter what I do, I can lose a bunch of weight, I'm still gonna look big. It's just my curse yeah. being a human. My last name is E W E N. Yes, I, I keep making that mistake because I've got a few uh, Scottish friends and Welsh friends, and there's a whole mixture of ways of spelling that. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably the Welsh. They always, they always are you Welsh, <laughs> and then they start busting my ass that it's not spelled E W A N. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's very good to speak to both you. Um, there's a kind of a nice, nice kind of a group of things to be able to talk about, and. It's a really nice catch up, and I wanted to thank you actually, Douglas, that um, for reaching out when I became seriously ill when I had COVID. So yeah. it was nice to see so many messages and that. So yeah, it, I couldn't read anything. I had no energy at the time, so I really do appreciate it again. So yeah, that was really. How nice. did you fare through all that? Was it a just a quick recovery, or were you down for a while? Uh, yeah, it was a long, it was a long recovery process, but since being intensive care for two weeks and then I would say to six months, six to eight months after. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah. Again, I don't know, you won't, you won't know Miranda, but um, yeah, I had COVID in uh, 2020, end of 2020, like a lot of people. And uh, I went to hospital on the day I was supposed to get married. So it was oh, almost, it, for some reason I had, I had this flash of uh, Private Benjamin you know, with Goldie Horn, where on her wedding day, her husband like has a massive heart attack. So I was like, what's going on? That's what all I thought. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah, all good now. All good now. And uh, yeah, just creating more work for myself than I actually need. So, uh, and that that's what the festival is doing to me at the moment, because I'm just as busy as normal with that. But my regular work level's just kind of gone there as well. So, um, no, it's uh it's it's nice to see that you're doing this though getting it going like what you uh did you just like wrestle this together or what happened there um yeah so the isolation film festival that starts in 2020 and in the same year it did the hellbound horror festival in the Oct in uh, october that year mm -hmm. and then i did the isolation the year after but i gave a, a year gap for the hellbound because i really wanted to put some more effort into it and it's so much work um, because I do everything, everything you see, I produce, and then I bring a couple of other people to finish a few bits. Um, and I had to have a gap, had to have a year gap, and I'll probably have another year gap before I think about doing it again, because it is, it's just so much, so much work, and everyone else that's involved and the people I kind of bring in for judging, uh, their work just went through the roof as well, so it's kind of tricky to do. You think it's going to be something that's going to be fun and entertaining and take your mind off work, and the next thing you know, you're just swamped, dude. It's... Yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, when you start an edit or start to write something or do anything creative, oh, yeah, I'll do this for half an hour. And then you kind of like playing any kind of computer game or something, you spend six hours doing it. So it's two hours, it's, I would say, on average, at least two hours every day since the submissions open. So. My wife doesn't like me doing it. <laughs> How many films are you watching? Um, we, I think we've got 18 submissions so far. Um, but they're, they're only 1 to 15 minutes, so it's not too bad. And there's a whole range of quality. There's a whole broad oh, range. Yeah. It's got to be fun, so, though. Yeah, it is. Like, the first animation we got from Sweden was absolutely incredible. Like, Just blown away by it. And we had like animations from Japan last time, and yeah, so yeah, it's a it's a fun process, and I, I see you're kind of delving into that yourself in terms of being a program lead or something on this uh, new event. Oh, I just leave it up to Miranda. I just kind of jumped in to help. Yeah. Well, so, um, what's um, how did can you can you tell me a bit about the the genesis of the project, how how it started in its original form? Um, well, I. Douglas was the one who reached out to us to do a, a cool event. We're like a little indie cinema in Northern Ontario, Canada. Um, and we haven't really hit the kind of horror genre cult market. And Douglas is actually living three hours away from us in a smaller town. And he found out about us and thought we were really cool. So we wanted to put something on. So we reached out months ago. But to someone else, not realizing that I am a big horror fan, horror fiend, and I've been trying to put 
some horror events on the map at the cinema. So it's actually just in the last few weeks, we've really come together and we had a deadline of mid September. And so we've just been working our butts off trying to put something really cool together with a really, really tight timeline. And I think what we've done is actually pretty incredible considering usually this thing, like things like this take months and months, usually you're planning for like a year uh, to get to the next year. So for next year, we're definitely going to start, I think like September 18th, <laughs> the day after we'll start for <laughs> yeah. 2023. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's um, what kind of, uh, where did your kind of interest in horror begin, Miranda? Uh, I, I don't even know. I, um, I came out of the womb watching horror movies. Like I, a lot of people will say they have that one horror movie that really I, made it. I'm, I'm just picturing. I'm just you. I'm just picturing you coming out of your mother and like the poltergeist is on TV or something. <laughs> Basically, they had it in wielded into the hospital room. She was just watching it leisurely. <laughs> Um, no, I, yeah. my dad was very into film and just movies. Like all we did until Blockbuster wasn't a thing anymore was we would go every weekend and just rent movies. And so since I was young, I just watched everything and anything. Like as long as there wasn't too much sex in it, he was okay with it. So it's just in horror caught okay. on. And I feel like as a nineties kid, there was so much spooky kids media out there. There was like, Goosebumps, Tales from the Crypt Creeper, there's Mummies Alive, there's just all that stuff. So it's just surrounded by Eerie Indiana. Yeah, horror stuff all the time. Yeah. And it just I don't know, it just grew. I remember for my eighth birthday, I got Pet Cemetery and Pinocchio's Revenge on VHS. Um, like I was before <laughs> growing up. Um I introduced my Pinocchio's Revenge. <laughs> it's awful. It's terrible, but it's it's also yeah, it's that, what what you've what you've done now. What you've done now is I'm gonna have to watch that, and it's gonna go in the show notes so other people are gonna know about that. Okay, great, <laughs> great. I think it's like a 2000s movie. I think it was a brand new release when I got it on VHS. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's fun. Just a wooden puppet going around killing people. You know, stuff you give an eight year old. <laughs> I think that I, sounds uh, amazing. I think I traumatized my friends growing up. I was the one who was like fourth grade sleepover everyone's watching every freddy krueger we're staying up all night and just watching all the nightmare on elm streets it's so i don't know i i've just from a young age i've just delved into horror to do my thing forever yeah did you um did you have a favorite elm street film i i think like everyone else i i really like the third one like dream warriors but also new nightmare is fantastic yeah. too and i feel like a lot of people forget about that one yeah. um I think they're all yeah, great. Absolutely. I think even the worst Nightmare on Elm Streets, they're still just so fun. I don't know. They're they're just creative and yeah. fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about you, Douglas? Um, I'm not sure if we, we talked about that too much uh, last time we spoke. Um, how did you kind of get into horror yourself? Oof. I mean, tons of reasons. I have an older brother. He's 10 years, 10 years my elder. So he was watching stuff way beyond my age group so i got to see some things i remember um friday the 13th part one when jason comes out at the end and tackles on the canoe that was like my first introduction to horror and i was like what is this and he started showing me all these films but the same thing like miranda was saying i was that kid that just like a lot of the films i watched i just found interesting like i didn't necessarily think to myself like oh i'm just gonna find the scariest stuff so when people come to my birthday parties we'd be watching these like crazy horror movies i remember like my 12th birthday we convinced my mom to let us rent natural born killers when it came out and i was just drawn to <laughs> yeah and she i remember like looking at her face i still remember to this day and she before she rented that she brought us all to go see howard stern's private parts in the theater yeah there's just a bunch of 12 year olds sitting there just like um but no when i got it yeah, that, that's who uh, that's who howard stern was aiming at <laughs> oh yeah yeah exactly he got our money dude he's it's good marketing he uh <laughs> But no, when I got in the horror movies, it, it was basically because of my older brother. And then I started meeting friends in high school that were like really into us. One buddy that just loved Freddy Krueger. I had another friend that just like loved movies in general, but really horror movies and a lot of David Lynch stuff and Cronenberg stuff. And I just kind of fed off them, went through their collections and just watched as much as I possibly could. Yeah, it's the same thing for me. Uh, I've got a brother that's about 12 years older than me. I should know. Um, but he introduced me through... 
um, VHS's compilations of horror films that he'd put together. Um, I, I'm sure my dad was selling copies of these horror films at work where he because he used to work in his car factory. And he used to sell pirated films every so often. He's retired now, so the police can't get him. So, he's not, so he won't be worried. Um, but I was introduced to, like, I think it was Child's Play. I think it was the first one or, or the first or second one. But at the time, in the UK, there was a, um, a, ch- a, ki- a child called Jamie Bulger who was taken onto railroad tracks, a real, a real, a real, a real little boy, by two kids that blamed that series of films for the reason they did the crime and it was this huge thing in the uk and it became what was deemed video nasties here um but then when i went look back at child's play um i absolutely absolutely love it like of there's a piece of art here that has a lot of kind of horror icons on i met brad Dourif once and because i was really a huge fan of deadwood as well um but yeah he was the nicest guy super like quiet but like super uh, grateful for horror fans and that was he said it's the best thing he's ever worked on even though you know one flew over the cuckoo's nest and all of that but yeah that kind of softened the edges you know when you meet these people and that and yeah kruger was the big thing for me really um and it used to give me so many nightmares like i've been fed my own stomach in my own dreams so that's when you know it's like <laughs> it's kind of you're watching them at such a young age <laughs> it's funny you're you seeing- see uh, the culture, like you're saying, me and Brad Dwarf, is that's another thing too with horror fans. I find once they get into the culture aspect of horror movies, like going out to these cons and meeting people, that's when they really become horrors, like horse well, fans of the horror genre based on uh, just wanting to be engulfed in it. That's that's another reason I got into it. once I started just finding out everyone loved it. It was like a shared experience. It was awesome. Exactly, that's the big thing, big takeaway, and why I think doing programming in horror is is huge and. It's the banding together. It's it's the reason Stranger Things is so good, and why I look why the thing for me is probably probably my favorite science fiction horror film. Obviously, you got Great of Alien. It's because everyone's banding together to survive, and that's what people are doing effectively at the cinema. They're banding together to get through the horror, uh, because so many people just wouldn't watch horror on their own because they'll you know they're scared shitless. Mm-hmm. They'll be scared of what they're watching, but there's something. The comedy and horror for me are the best things to watch in the cinema. You know, you obviously you've got action and all of that, but um, yeah, comedy and horror is the best. Like when I went to see um, It Chapter Two, the newest one, and it was just everyone <laughs> loved it. And my my wife's first name is Vicky, and <laughs> under the um, what do they call them, the bleachers? He comes out of the shadow at one point in part two. And he says, hello, Vicky. <laughs> my, wife, my wife was just like absolutely crapping it. It was just hilarious. So, yeah, that's why I love horror. And that's why I kind of like the idea that you guys have, have had and Miranda, the kind of push you want for for your, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? What's the event called? It's Sudbury Indie Creature Con, but con with a K. So it's sick. We're doing a sick con this year. Yeah, I love that. That's great branding straight away. That really is. So what have you, um, can you tell us a little bit about it, uh, where exactly it is, and uh, what you've got going on on the weekend? Yeah, sure. So it's happening um, September 16th and 17th at Sudbury Indie Cinema in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Um, It starts on the Friday night. We're going to do... um, a few hours of short films. We're trying to focus on local Ontario Canadian, but then we've also got uh, blocks of international short films. Um, Then we're doing a feature film that night with the main actress doing an introduction at the cinema, which Doug was able to score, which was amazing. I'll get him to talk more about that. The next day we were trying to include some stuff that was more kid friendly and family oriented. So we're actually gonna, we're throwing in like a Mario Kart tournament on the big screen at the cinema during the day, which will be a lot of fun with a lot of like horror based prizes and all of that. We've got um, a guest speaker, creature actor coming in to do a panel. And then we've got uh, some Resident Evil voice actors coming in. We're still trying to snag one actor who was in the most recent Resident Evil film, which was filmed in Sudbury, Ontario. That's where Raccoon City was filmed. Um, 
And then that night we have another feature with another introduction from the director, um, which Douglas was also able to score. So maybe you can talk about those films. And the, the yeah, that'd be great. Yes. All right, passing it on to me. All right, so um, with with the Friday night, we have Two Witches. It's the newest film. Um, I forget his last name now, by Pierre. I, I'm hoping you're going to look this up and correct me here. But it stars Rebecca Kennedy. Are you familiar with Rebecca Kennedy? Uh, I'm sure I've right. heard the name. She, uh, she's she's fantastic. She's actually it's funny that she's in horror movies because she's the most unassuming person that you'd you'd see and immediately think like, oh, uh, she's she's in uh, Los Angeles right now playing on Amazon Prime, where she plays uh, a young mute girl. So she's going to come in and introduce her film, and then her and I are going to make some announcements because we have some exciting news to share as well. And after that, we're going to have, on Saturday night, we're going to have Ryan Kruger's uh, Fried Berry. And he's going to come on over Zoom because he's out in Cape Town. So that's a huge difference, just like you right now. I think he's six yeah. hours. He has six hours on us. So he's going to come in and introduce the film. And we have uh, the creature actor. We haven't announced a lot of these things, which is going to pump out next week. Um, so you'll see a lot yeah, of these announcements. But uh, we have uh, Matt McCallum coming in. He, does, he was in Nightmare Alley, the new Resident Evil album, from the Wrecking City. And he does a lot of creature acting and monster acting. And he's going to come in and speak to the crowd about that. And then, like Rana said, during the uh, video game tournament, we have uh, Joe White and uh, Julian Anderson coming in to do the voiceover talk, the Resident Evil characters. Uh, they did, Joe did like the old Chris Renfield from like 90s. And uh, Julian was in the uh, new remakes. She was uh, Ada Wong. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah, so we have them coming in. And for for Sudbury being a, like a smaller Northern Ontario city, it's, it's nice to get something like this together because we, in Canada, especially in remote parts of Canada, we're not used to having events like this. There are some fantastic runs that run here in the Sioux Um and like for the video game tournament, they do have a Northern Gaming Expo already throws one on, so they're coming in. So we try to get other people involved because it's not something that we necessarily want to compete against because there's so few of us, so we thought we might as well all band together and create something big. That's fantastic. I, I think it's it's great to be able to do that, and I can I can attest to how the satisfaction you get from, from putting something on and you know, getting people involved, it's, that's why, as soon as I start the process of the festival, and like you guys have started the process of this, it's the build-up before you begin is the worst thing, like when you start the process of, you know, making calls to people, getting the program together, coming up with prizes and events, that's, that's kind of, you're on the train, it's like that end sequence of, of uh, Back to the Future 3, you're on the train, you can't get off. <laughs> And you're just adding fuel to the fire every so often, you know. Um, but yeah, I think it's absolutely wicked to to band together. And how did you two meet? How did you kind of know about each other? Randomly, it was uh. So like she was saying, uh, you remember when you remember you watch uh, Titan? Hmm. So obviously, I'm a huge. Oh, I always okay. This is why I butcher Pierre's name too. I'm not good with French names. Julia's last name, um, the director of Titan, but. I'm a huge fan. I loved Raw. So I went to TIFF and I saw Titan. And then actually I have a funny story about that. I got shushed, like someone shushed me in the theater during the credits. And I was stunned because I was like, it's, it's like literally nothing's even on the screen right now. And all I said was, oh, this is going to be good. And then like this guy literally went out of his way to walk towards me, stand up and shush me. I still have pain over that. If I, like, I, I'm going to go to TIFF every year just to hope to God I run into that guy because I'm going to shush him wherever he goes. But <laughs> it was playing in this indie theater because I was following Titan, so I was like, where the, where the hell can I watch this movie? Because it's not going to get released anywhere where I'm from. And I saw that it was playing at the Indie in Sudbury, so I was like, awesome. I will drive six hours, three hours there, and three hours back to watch this movie. I loved it, this movie. So I drove there, and I, I met with Beth, who is on the board of the Indie Cinema. Randa, Randa runs the whole show behind the scenes here. She's the brains. What's Beth do? She's on the, the board, executive right? She, director. She's she's the executive yeah. director, so she's not on the board. She's kind of she's kind of my boss, but I've been running. She is the board. Yeah. But I met her, and she she was like, you know, showed me around. I was like, man, I really like the theater, and I really want to get involved. 
Um, so I ran for a place on the board and ended up on the fundraising committee. And they had events going that were uh, just more tailored towards just everyday events. Once again, it's, it's not like a huge movie city, right? Like it's not like New York or Toronto where you can throw something that's very specific in film and a lot of people show up, right? It's, you got to kind of, you know, work with what you got. So we were doing things like garage sales and, you know, things of that nature. And I, I kept saying that we should throw an event like this would be awesome for like an indie horror event or just showing like B movies on Thursday nights. That, that just raked in the money. And then actually, then a couple of weeks later, I saw that they were showing Toxic Avenger 1 and 2 back to back. And I was like, yes, whoever's doing this is listening to me. And I haven't met Miranda yet. And then a couple of weeks ago, they're like, we're going to introduce you to Miranda. And I was thinking that it was just going to be another board member um, that I was very opposite of. So I was like thinking to myself, OK, I'll just you know play it safe. And all of a sudden, it's just like, boom, I get to meet this like enormous horror fan that absolutely gets where I'm coming from. So her. We were like, we'll do it together. We'll just get this done. So we have only been going at it for about two weeks on this event, and that's pretty much when we met. So yeah, that's what I- well, it, almost, it almost seemed like you'd known each other for a long time when I came on the call. <laughs> so that that's good. So we've been talking uh, a lot, person. Person, so, trying to set this up. Literally, I've talked to her more than anyone else in my family. We're literally texting and talking <laughs> every it, it doesn't stop, and this person wants this, or this guest is like, "Hey," or this one reaches out and they change their mind. Like, it it gets nuts, and then also, yeah, it's just we've literally we've had to get over that comfort threshold because we don't have time to mess around. Well, no, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, this is a this is a good sign, I'd say, for next year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can throw this together in such a short period, and then you know you've got a year to plan things, and as long as you're kind of you know, you kind of reach out consistently over that year period, and then you kind of build it up towards this this time. Is it the same time next year? I'm guessing. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, it's kind of dependent on when well, it kind of falls. Yeah. It, yeah. Also, well, in Sudbury, um, there's like another pretty big northern uh, film festival that plays. Is it that weekend? Or weekend yeah. Before? It starts on the Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, so we kind of, you know, kept it all. Everyone's going to be there for that kind of stuff, anyways. So it's probably it's going to be most likely around mid September, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you can you can build things up to then, and and yeah, reaching out and trying to get people for events and to do you favors um, is is the thing I found when I got judges for my fir- the first Hellbound Festival was. He was throwing out messages online, emails, making friends of friends, and then that kind of thing. And then it's it's coming across as honest and getting the information across straight away. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you've seen... I don't know how many times I've been offered to model necklaces on the, on the Hellbell <laughs> Festival. I get DMs from these awful companies saying, oh, we'd offer you this 20% discount all for my little dog's little neck chief or something you know like uh something for my dog to wear i'm like i don't want any of that and i just delete it straight away so i i basically just started throwing messages out there uh, two years ago uh, for judges and then i've become friends with a, a couple of big big people so and it it's it's incredible it's absolutely incredible what you can get mm-hmm. for nothing sometimes or just for being a nice person and you're not trying to get them to read your script or anything like that um and then i ended up with i ended up with a production designer of jaws's telephone number for his house and we had a great chat on the phone and then we did a podcast recording and all of that um and yeah uh, i'm just friends with his daughter and then when i mentioned his daughter on the podcast when i recorded with him he he opened up and then i asked him to be a judge and you know it's like just kind of being aware of how things are going whilst you're talking to someone as well so and it's a great way to build connections up and then you know if you're creating a film you could ask them for advice that kind of thing so uh, so yeah i think more power to you for doing doing what you do is there anything that you know i could do or any help you might i could assist on we could assist on at all maybe you know for this year or even for next year yeah, well, for this year, that's what I was reaching out to because Miranda put together this uh, awesome like short film block that we're going to have. And we have a lot of Canadian artists 
and we want to try and let them know that there's more of an international stage that they can present on. And I know that your festival would be two weeks following that. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that have something for them to see that they would uh, love to be a part of. So I was really trying to open every all these young filmmakers' eyes. I mean, not all of them are just young filmmakers. A lot of them are you know seasoned or international as well. But with being in a small northern community, it's nice to know your options are out there, and that's open to you. Like you see, like you were saying, like when you start reaching out to people, you'd be surprised how things work and that's a huge part of this business is networking and knowing what's available to you and your festival is absolutely wonderful and all the times i've ever been with you talked with you done anything with you just chatted over even about camera gear or anything it's it's yeah it's wonderful i, I just wanted you it's just like uh, <laughs> yeah. i think i think it's because it's mutual spec and uh, respect and friendship and wanting to learn and just absorbing as much as possible so you know, it, it's great that you know we can build these connections up, but it's also uh, a friendship. It's also your knowledge base because I'm learning all the time, whether it's mic technique or lighting or whatever, um, and how to network. So yeah, always, always kind of building up. Um, yeah. So uh, is there like a slot of short film stuff that you you might need content for, or oh, well, so. Yeah, like I'm still looking for uh, like a few more films to add to our block, and I'm still waiting on a few more um, like local local films from Sudbury. Um, but if you had anything that you think that we might want to see over here in Canada, I'm more than um, open to seeing them. I actually also love sorting through these short films. It's just so it's so much fun <laughs> to look at them yeah. all and just see like everyone's. Because they're all so different from each other, um, and I've never actually done yeah. this and sat. I've never watched this many short films. Like I definitely have watched short films in my life, but not to this extent. And it's a lot of fun. So if there's anything you wanted uh, to throw our way, I'd be so interested. Yeah, there's um, there's there's a a really good crop of of short films uh, that are part of this year's festival. So what I can do, I'm very very happy to reach out to. Um, reach out to a good few of them like Cindy Stenberg who made a film last festival called uh, Dreamcatcher she is super super talented uh, She's more, she knows how to market herself she's just done a really successful Indiegogo um, Kickstarter for a short film um, but her, her animated short film called Sour Love is is just absolutely amazing absolutely amazing so i'm happy to kind of send you links and once they've okayed things i can give you their direct contact details so i'm really really happy to kind of uh, spread the love so to speak that'd be fantastic and we've got filmmakers from the uk australia uh, mexico um, the us and yeah just a few all over really mm -hmm. um but yeah, there's yeah, I'm really really happy to do that. That's absolutely no problem because all all it is is just a, an, an extra benefit for those uh, those filmmakers uh, out there. And there's films from our original festival that are some of them are outstanding. Um, so I'd I'd seriously consider some of those as well. So is there kind of a limit on the the length of the films and how does that work? We're trying to keep it 15 minutes and under. Um... Most of them I have are, are around five minutes, but as long as it's 15 minutes, just because if you have too many that are 20 minutes long, then you're, you can only show so many of them. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm actually, I don't know if I'm going to get enough, but I kind of want to do like a little segment where it's one minute films. So they're just like powering through a few really, really, really short films. Um, I don't know if I have quite yeah. enough for that, but um, yeah, 15 minutes are under. Yeah, we've got um, we, uh, there's a chap that submitted a last film, a last uh, festival called Ryan uh, Korshi. He's uh, submitted two films that are uh, <laughs> he shot them for TikTok. Um, think think of that as you will, but they're one minute. But in terms of what he's achieved in that one minute is incredible, absolutely incredible. Like he's got a team of people around him that's smash something out of the park um so but the only thing i don't like about that this is just a personal preference is the nine by 16 ratio i'm i'm not a fan for, for art installations and 
bus stops and all sorts of other marketing materials i think that's fine but for film it's always you know i would say square or widescreen well, that's, um, that's but anything yeah. tighter than that it's just a framing issue for me i uh i actually have one of those that i have and i maybe it's the same thing i think there was some one minute horror short film competition on TikTok because one of them I've got is it's the same so it's got that same framing where it's only going to take up like a quarter of the screen um, but it's pretty yeah. good like it's 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 Lovecraftian it's pretty fun oh, that's I awesome. have seen that's awesome. some short film content that I've been sent from TikTok that's just absolutely amazing some of those people yeah. are nuts talented with what they can do on that thing mm-hmm yeah, I have I have difficulty enough framing for trying to frame for anamorphic. I, I can't imagine trying to frame for for this. No, I, it's not. That's why, like, it, it's it's not how they use it like that. With uh, there was this. I don't know. I don't have TikTok or anything like that. But my cousin sends it to me all the time. There was this one um, block on Reddit that was doing. All they do is give horror movie suggestions, and then these TikTokers would go in and make them. And oh my lord, like it was. The one minute content put together to do, let's say, 90 minutes or 90 films is almost worth watching more than an actual feature. Some of them are just like incredible. I couldn't even believe what these, like, not kids or who they're making them, but who, it's nuts. It's insane. So, yeah. do you have a lot of submissions like that, like in 9 by 16? Um, originally, when I we did the first isolation film festival, I was like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very, very welcoming. And I said, yeah, submit anything you like. And I then regretted that because I'm a aspect ratio snob. So this is acceptable. This is acceptable. But that to me, it's, you know, maybe I'm just old. It's old thinking. It's not cinematic. Cinematic to me is big screen, mm-hmm. you know, and, and enjoy it that way. Uh, but we had a few and some of them were absolutely horrendous. But this year we've got two from Australia that are, I, I forgot about the aspect ratio. Wow. So the content and the direction and the lighting and everything was just, just fantastic. And the story was great. And I, I, I forgot about the length of the film and it just didn't matter. So, you know, it, if you, if it's good enough, it'll work. Um, I, uh, I basically left TikTok because I was watching Michael Chan, who I do host the Help and Pop this podcast with normally, uh, and he's on there. He does some crazy stuff, but I watch. I used to watch it for that more so than anything else, because you know, watching something narrative on your phone, uh, you know, I, I just I, I can't. Like when you've got good sound at home and a really nice TV, and you're watching Better Call Saul, which looks amazing and sounds amazing, and then you watch something. On your phone, it's it's. I don't know. There's a. I know people that watch stuff on their phone. Literally, like they, they like. Oh, I just lay in bed and watch Netflix on my phone, and I think to myself, like, how do you even enjoy that? Yeah, it's the. Um, I think it's a. There's a. There's a level of disrespect for me when you watch something on a on a the smallest screen. Just imagine how many people worked on the audio. Yeah. And you know when you're watching it and. You're sat on the toilet, you've got it next to your window, you're watching something like that, and how can you watch a film like that? It just doesn't work. Well, and, and, yeah. you know? I, um, I had a period where I decided I was a minimalist and I got rid of everything I owned, basically. I, I have stuff again, but I, had, I didn't have a TV for about two years. I still don't have a TV, I use a projector. I, that's what I use instead, which I think is actually that's that's proper. Yeah. That's proper. <laughs> yeah, that's proper. Um, but at that point, I had my little 15 inch, maybe smaller than 15 inch laptop. So for two years at home, that's how I was watching movies. Was like in bed or whatever on that laptop, and I yeah. think I actually there was films that were fantastic films that I didn't actually like as much as I should have because I didn't get that cinematic like what you're talking about. Like on the small screen, it's just not the same with that audio. You need to see a lot of films on a bigger screen with the good audio, or else you really can't appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, well, you're... that's the thing. You see, like that TikTok film would have worked on the phone, but and like if you watched a fan footage film on your laptop on your bed, and you've got this big wide room in your peripheral vision. The effect that 
some films like Host, which I think is a Shudder film, yeah. would work amazingly on a laptop especially. Yeah. And if you've got a really good set of headphones, you can, you know, and I understand budget and constraints and all of that, um, but it's uh, it's it's the audio. It's the biggest thing, you know, where like a lot of people buy a huge TV, OLED or whatever, but never invest in the audio. And f- for me, it's it's the same thing. Like I was just watching an episode of Better Call Saul, and that fi- that series is is a, it's a masterpiece. It's an absolute masterpiece of audio, cinematography, writing, especially in story. And that's the only way we can justify watching it because we used to watch it in a, sm- a small TV in the kitchen, and thought, no, we have to go and pay pay respect because of what I do separate. I do kind of freelance and for my for my Joe job. Um, audio is so important and how can I just kind of leave that behind so um, it's just it's it's a frustration of mine yeah, I, um, yeah you're a little bit snobby though man getting disrespecting it's you gotta think about it now too you got Disney Plus dropping things like Prey that aren't even getting theatrical releases I know like, exactly I watched yeah, it's the, the frustrating it. thing with that I watched you it, watched it? yeah I, I put on Disney oh, Plus. Oh, so jealous. That. And so I watched on there. It, the aspect ratio was wonky because it was on Disney Plus, but I got to see it on the big screen. It was, uh, I can't remember. What was, was it? Huge bars on the top and bottom and I couldn't fix it because they only offered it in the one way. Like it. Uh, six. I can't remember what the aspect ratio was. It wasn't 16 by 9? No, no. It, no that, that'll have been anamorphic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, like, it looked fine, just a lot of black on the screen, but I still got to see it on the big screen in a theater. That's the perk of working at a cinema is when it's closed at night, you can go in and watch whatever whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine, he uh, he's a IMAX, IMAX technician, so he, he, goes, he flies around Europe fixing uh, IMAX uh, projectors, uh, and that's all he does. And he's done that, he's... <laughs> Because they, you know, he's he works with digital projectors and film projectors, mm-hmm. and like the BFI in London, it's the the biggest screen in the UK, and it's a it's a cinema just for built for one screen, and it's got the digital, the laser, and the seventy millimeter, and he was fixing that, and then he he plugged in his own console to it, to the biggest screen in the country, and he said it was just absolutely ridiculous. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's the advantage, and that's a frust- the frustrating thing with Prey. I, we absolutely loved it. Was the press screenings and the people doing the previewing all got to see it in the cinema? I'm like, I I paid to go and see it. Yeah. I've got di- I pay for Disney Plus. I'd paid to go and see it because it looks it looks fantastic. Dan Trachtenberg did uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane, and I absolutely loved that. So. Yeah. yeah, a little you, bit of frustrating. Have you seen really. a lot, a lot of uh, like behind the scenes on that film on uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane? Uh, no, I've not. No, oh, dude, check it out, dude. It's nuts. Like some of the stuff he had to do, especially ADRing John Goodman for like forty-five seconds while his face is turned from the camera. That's like afterwards in post. It's crazy stuff in that film. With with the digital stuff like Disney Plus doing that, I just read today Halloween Ends is dropping on Peacock the same time it goes gets a theatrical release. And the, it's it's the studios that are, are crushing this, and there's going to be more digital content, and it's just how it's going now, right? So, I mean, for a lot of moviegoers, you can't just assume like everyone understands these things. So you have a, a giant populace of huge movie fans that are spending like movies are making billions of dollars who just assume every movie is mixed and made the same. So they're watching it on phone doesn't make no difference, even though some sound yeah. better than some sound worse, right? Because they're actually made for that platform. So, yeah. I mean, I blame the whole system. They should never, ever, like direct to streaming. I tell people, it's like, I, I was, and I was reading this too, and it was hilarious, but like Netflix and all that, and even Disney Plus, um, you know, with, you know, there's obvious exceptions like Prey, but that's like our generation straight to, DV, straight to VHS, right? Yeah. Just, with, <laughs> just with big names though. I was watching, um, and I don't want to like crap on anything, so I'm not the biggest fan of doing that. I mean, I love action and violence, and Day Shift was good for that. But um, I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, like, man, Netflix is just dropping this stuff on TV, paying these people ridiculous amounts of money, and then just throwing away Jamie Foxx like that. Like, I just felt I was a little bit shamed, but I don't know. I just felt like I'm, it's our generation straight the VHS with the giant yeah. names on the cover. It's all it is now, right? So there's digital content. Yeah. It's just fast and pretty, and that's why people watch on their cell phones and no one really cares to watch anything. 
know, well, it's game. almost like they're they're trying to create their own legacy of content, and because that's their biggest problem is they have to pay so much money to get other studios content and when when you've got streamers that have got their own platforms now um they're going to be able to get that stuff less and less um but yeah i've 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 got a bit of a love-hate relationship with the whole streaming thing online and i'm like i i used to love marvel movies i've watched pretty much everything but then for the last i'd say couple of years or the last year or so i've just waited for it to come on disney plus now just simply because the interconnected story is not there, and I went to see Thor. The only reason I went to see Thor in the cinema is because a, a cinema advert I I directed and filmed uh, was on 170 cinemas across the UK, and that's the only reason I went to see it. And I was like, I was really happy with how my stuff, the Black Magic camera, looked amazing on the big screen. I was so, and I shot anamorphic footage for the advert. And I was just so happy because it got mixed in London, and I was just so proud of it. And then I went to, when I watched the film, I thought to myself, I kind of wish I'd watched this at home. And it's got obviously you know the complex audio and all of that, and it's not the same thing at home. But yeah, for me, it's like uh, yeah, it's a love hate relationship. Like there's some great shows that you can only watch on on at home, but like Better Call Saul could easily be in the cinema some of the, the standards of storytelling is just through the roof um, i, I so actually yeah, have never seen an episode of that show it, it is it's a master class of uh filmmaking you know it's tv it's a master class of filmmaking i watch breaking bad i love breaking bad but i never i think i think you'll I, i'm on the verge of saying this is better oh, right. um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially the last thing that I just saw, yeah. This recording is over. No. I, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I love that television. Um, when they so came uh, back, before we go on, though, from Better Call Saul, when they came back, Cranston and Aaron Paul, was it just, was it awesome? Um, well, it's it's not really spoiler. It's it's set way before with one character. When, uh, when so the, he's talking to Walton. Okay, I won't say anything. But I mean... I want. I, I just. I almost want to watch the whole TV show just to see that scene. Yeah. Did you see um, El Camino? Uh, no, no, I, I haven't. No. Uh, Do I have to watch that for Better Call Saul? Um, no, but for to kind of end Breaking Bad, it's probably worth watching yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just just to go back to your festival, have you guys thought of any merch, or is it too late, or are you going to do that next year? With like actual festival, well, we, we're we have like uh, we're gonna do like t-shirts and things like that. We'll just keep it small for the first year, and and we'll yeah. probably unfold bigger things like that next year, like more merch, more vendors, more fun stuff like that. Yeah, it's hard I love that. the um, I love the logo. You see that logo on an orange tea would be amazing. Oh my god! Really? Did you did you see the email I sent you today, Miranda? No, I didn't. I, know I, I, I put the logo on a black shirt. You don't check your email every five minutes. Um, I put the logo on a black shirt. I wrote in the email. I'm like, I made the shirt black because there's no way I'm wearing an orange shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get that. Yeah. No, I I think they would look good on orange too, but it's also very like pylon-esque. But yeah, we actually, um, I whipped out that logo really quickly because everything's been so time constrained. But uh, I, in Sundry, we have the big nickel. We're home of the biggest nickel in the world. It's our thing. So I tried to make the outside as a nickel, but it's kind of hard to see, and what's something crawling out of the big nickel? Uh, um, okay. Yeah. So that's where that came from. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. the thing. If you look at my, um, if you look at my original Hellbound Horror Festival logo, it's it couldn't be simpler. And the set the second year round, I came, I just have I got it here somewhere. Um, I don't think it's on that, but I I kind of I just got someone on Fiverr, a designer on Fiverr too that I'd worked with before, to come up with a, a real kind of proper logo, and that's that's just a progression thing, you know. Over the next couple of years, you'll kind of really find your branding and everything. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm quite excited to be involved, even in a small way, to be able to kind of help you guys find some uh, content for the show. Yeah, well, I was hoping you could do like a 
a small introduction. I mean, I was going to say live, but I mean, now that I'm looking at the time, you're going to be late and do some pre recorded, but just something from the Helldown Film Festival that introduces the short film block and like hype up, you know, make film. Let, like I was saying, let these filmmakers know how exciting it is and all the stuff you're talking about, like audio and stuff, just how they should keep going and keep submitting these films. So I was hoping you would send us something like that from the UK so we could. Yeah, definitely do that. Absolutely no problem. Yeah. If you just send me, um, if you send me an email of the basics of what you need, then um, I've got I've got a little a little small auto cue on my camera stuff now, so I can do all of that. Um, but yeah, if you want me to do that, it's not a problem. That, that'd be quite fun to do. Um, I can do a um, yeah, I've got the time to do. It. I, I can do a super cut of the um, submission so far for this year, if you like, as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I can do I can cut all scenes from like sh at least single shots from all the submissions. I think that would work really well. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Like, yeah, like that's what I, I wanted something that the show what you were doing too. And actually, I was going to get you in, like the whole like uh, scary movie get up, have you come in like reading from a book, be the host, like the crypt keeper <laughs> over here. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come in. I'll come in carrying this. <laughs> Dude, I am obsessed with Pinhead lately, and every day something comes up about this thing. So I've been playing Dead yeah. by Daylight, and if you see Dougie Smokes on there, I only play the killer. I don't play the other people. But <laughs> all I do is literally play Pinhead. So I, I, I was talking to Nat a couple of days ago, and I was like, I really want to have like a double feature Hellraiser night. Oh, my God, yeah. And it was just, oh, dude. And I I just watched it again. For like, it felt like the first time. Like I, I don't think I've watched that film forever. And I was like, "This is amazing." So I've just been looking into it and getting, and then it's everywhere. Dude. I'm telling well, you. Well, that's the beauty of it. When you become obsessed with Hellraiser, you see the people obsessed with the cube and everything. You, you there, you see their obsession, and then it has this kind of like the snake eating its own tail effect. So um, when you buy a new car, and all you see now is that car, and you think like, "Oh man, everyone owns this car." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I started looking at um, Mercedes E Vito, like an electric van, because that's what I want to get to. to have that just so you can open the boot, throw on the camera gear in, and just do that. And now I now I started looking for them. They're everywhere. It's like the Truman Show. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just something about this. A friend of mine called Wave Props. Uh, shout out to him. He made this for me, and this is you can see the different colours. Uh, this is screen accurate to the one that's under the uh, the little glass jar in the second film. Awesome. Um, so he made that, uh, and he made this. I'll show you this as well. He made this when I was in hospital. It was going to be a it was going to be a birthday present, but they actually finished it, and it's to scale. It's screen accurate um, for the Maltese Falcon. Who's making so, these? So a friend of mine called Wave Props. He, he's on my ins. I follow him on Instagram. I know him really well, a good friend of mine. So it's got the scratches that uh, Sydney Greenstreet made in the film as well. So he, he just made this. It's got weight to it as well. What's it made out of? Um, it's just uh, it's like three D printed plastic. Yeah, that's. So is he like running this out of it? Like, is he doing this full time, or is he work for this company? No, this is this is like a side hustle. But he he does. He doesn't make them very often. But when he does, it's like right, got to get on that. I you know. Hang on, wave form. So, I'm just going to write it. Uh, wave wave props. Wave props. Okay, I just want to write it sort of. So yeah. Because I, I, I've yeah, been the, looking uh... for stuff like that. I want to start expanding the collection. I want to start with Hellraiser now. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Well, I've got yeah. There's there's bits of bobs throughout here. Um, oh, I've got I've got to show you this. I'm not sure if I showed you this the last time uh, we spoke. Um, but this is from the director's European tour in 2016. Uh, this is signed by John Carpenter, where I met him. Uh, so this is artwork from his music tour. Oh, that's awesome. From his music tour? So yeah, he performs all the music that he wrote for his films. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, Halloween, Big Trouble in Little China, The Fog. They Live. And then Prince of Darkness. Did, the he, bottom. did he score They Live? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, or at least he wrote the uh, the theme, the main theme. Um, but yeah, there's there's all manner of bits and bobs in here. But yeah, uh, it's the thing, isn't it? It's just extending the collection, really. And that just goes back to why, like, I was thinking that too when we were talking about doing a horror convention. I was like, is this 
is this one too many horror conventions? But they're, they're, everywhere you go, there's people like like you and that just want this stuff and have stuff like me that has tons of stuff. Miranda, you know what I mean? Like it's everywhere. Like it's it's the whole horror movie experience, dude. Right down, the, it's it's the best. You're not gonna beat it. Yeah, it's that shared experience. Back to that shared experience, isn't it? Yeah, it's like actually it's funny when you're talking about going to see the horror comedies in the theater. My best theater experience was in. Uh, London, Ontario, we went and saw Freddy versus Jason, and the crowd is like right from the beginning understood that you had to pick a side and then you had to cheer wild. It was amazing. It was like the greatest movie experience of my life. It yeah. may not have been the greatest movie ever made, but it was definitely it, it has a huge like hold on me, so I never watch it again just in case they'll take that away from me. So right now, that's, that's on my top of my list of like my movies I absolutely love, but will never watch again. Yeah, um, when I uh, there's there's I won't repeat them now, but there's two lines of dialogue in that Freddie says to two of the girls, and I was like, if I I'll probably say this tonight, but when I go to bed, my wife's like, oh, how did it go? How was your recording? I'll say fine, and then I'll say one of the quotes, and it'll be really disturbing. Um, but yeah, for that film in particular, uh, there's a couple of lines of really dark uh, comedy. Um, but yeah, I went to see a Q and A Q&A with Ken Kersinger and uh, Rob England for that. Uh, so they presented the film, did a Q and A after. Uh, but I, 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 and then that's another thing. When you've had a Q and A or a screening or an introduction, you are so much more involved in the film. Mm-hmm. So people will love it even more, and the excitement and the wearing the t-shirt or whatever. It's super. You know, they're really kind of tuned in. So. It's you've got a captured audience that is already it's already sold on the event, and then if you kind of have great content, they'll remember that and they'll just continue to build. Yeah. It's it's that's that's what I mean too. Even with having this in uh, in the Indies, uh, it, it is nice to build like another, like bring everyone out from that particular community and have them come together and have something to look forward to every year where they actually you know they, there's a lot of people that I I see again at the next horror convention or there are a lot of it's like a yearly thing for me. That's almost like Christmas, right? So to be able to provide something like that up North is, it's awesome that we're able to do this so fast and make sure it sticks. So next year it could be even bigger and better. Yeah, exactly. So how far, so Miranda, how far is, um, for the uneducated, uh, British guy that I am, how far is Sudbury from, um, Toronto, for instance? We're about four hours North of Toronto. So we're we're not that far. I don't know. So that's like yeah. I've met people from um, the UK, England, and uh, it seems like anything past twenty minutes away is very, very, very far out there. Um, but for us, like North Bay is our closest city, and it's an hour and a half away. We're kind of we're we're pretty far away from everything else. Once you get to Southern Ontario, Toronto area, everything's next to each other. But when you get further up north, like even Douglas is three hours away from us so yeah we're about four hours north of toronto oh, okay. everything That's happens cool. in the south man. you gotta remember canada the weather you don't want to have three hundred thousand people and two feet of snow every day right it gets a little bit crazy so sudbury being as big as it is up north like you can imagine this i think it's like three hundred thousand people there it, and getting the snowstorms traffic like it's hard to everyone lives down south or in bc way out on the west coast yeah, which yeah, yeah which you, Vancouver's like a seven-day drive if you're just driving by yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Country. Wow. So you 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 guys have proper snowstorms where we we have snowstorms and it it's nothing really. Um, oh yeah, dude! Yeah. Like it gets crazy over here. Like I we dread the winter. Like I I sometimes I sit here in July or August, like even about three days ago, and I just stare out the window because I'm like it's going to be winter in like two months and that sucks and it sucks like i i would not be throwing on this convention in the winter that's for sure it's hard to get anywhere we literally get like two three feet of snow like it's not an exaggeration sometimes it's crazy not in one falling mind you but it piles up and we do get you know huge amounts of snow all the time it's cold minus 30 degrees celsius dude it's horrible well and we're we're talking about canadian weather right now i I think we're we're so adaptable here, like where we are in Sudbury, and I'm sure it's basically the same in Sault Ste. Marie. In the summer, we'll get up to my, plus 45 degrees with the humidex sometimes. And then in the winter, we'll go down to minus 45 with the 
with the wind chill. So we have like a hundred degree difference within our year. It's like not last year, but the three years previous in Sudbury, we hit minus 50 degrees Celsius, which is bonkers. But uh, yeah, our, our summers are generally really nice here though. We've oh, summers. Well, is that, is that, a reason what was the reason for the september dates for this instead of say closer to halloween so oh there were another couple of events slot? yeah there were another, another uh, couple of events playing that month and that that was the slot actually i was kind of given I, that was like it was the best time it was it there was going to be a big movie crowd in sudbury already because of what else was going on and I was like, oh, we might as well take advantage of it. Yeah, and when Douglas oh, was first awesome. reaching out to us, he wasn't talking to me. He was talking to board members in our ED. And he hadn't quite dipped his toes into a horror convention. It was supposed to be more of kind of like a like comic booky kind of nerd con kind of thing. That's what they were calling it. Um, I think it's just because he was working with people who, who didn't understand that kind of crowd. But then once we started talking, it went from being like this kind of I don't know, nerd con thing to being like, we are doing a horror convention and that's what's happening. So um, we have. Yeah, it's, it's that realization. It's that realization when you've got Pandora's box and you're just about to open it and what you're going to let yourselves in for. Exactly. Well, the, how much... the average age on the board is significant. Like it's, it's like 60. I, you know, Miranda is young. I'm younger. Um, so everything was kind of family friendly and so i was like hey I, you know we should if we're going to do this video game we should have some resident evil voice actors and right away it's like oh what's that it's a video game oh it's for kids yeah no it's it's, it's it is but maybe not like five-year-olds are playing resident evil and the adults play i still play so i like they didn't understand a lot of the culture and a lot of events like that so i was working towards that so the first email they're like we're going to introduce you to miranda and i was like okay it's you know another board-esque type of member so i was like i'm gonna keep it family friendly just you know try and help because it's a non-profit everything they do goes to paint the bills keep on the light showing movies and they're showing stuff that like no one else is um so i was like yeah no, i'll keep it family friendly and help out so the first email i sent her i'm like hey we're gonna have a bouncy castle and we're gonna we're gonna have like face painting it's gonna be fantastic and then she just like kind of messages me back and then i finally meet her um and I'm like, oh, you're significantly younger than I thought you were. I had no idea that you liked horror movies and that we can take this turn. And then I just looked around. I was like, that first email must have threw you off completely. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> let's throw a child's birthday party. Because that's we're just trying to keep the family friendly. And it, it wasn't that. That's that we were. Yeah, because you were you were testing the fences at that point. Yeah. You know you yeah. And then as soon as she came on, everything changed, and I just kind of sunk my claws. And I was like, awesome, because like this is exactly where I wanted this to go. So. Well, uh, keep the face painting and just just give everyone pinhead. You just paint on pinhead. <laughs> Actually, we have a uh, 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 Rob. I, I'm horrible with names. Rob Shadow. Yeah. Shadow. Yeah. He he's from Sudbury. He does zombie zombie portraits. He's a cool guy, man. Um, I think he has like the largest collection of zombie art portraits like in the world. Dude, this guy's like he literally draws everything. And um, he's done stuff for The Walking Dead and stuff. And he's going to be one of the vendors. So we're hoping that, like, he can, um, with the young kids, turn some of them into zombies and then we can get their face painted. So it's going to be fun for the kids. Like, it's still there. It's just Halloween, right? We're going to have, like, a creature contest, like, uh, for the cosplay for adults, cosplay for kids. The first year, I'm expecting it to be a little bit on the slower side of things because people didn't have a lot of time to prepare. But by next year, cosplay is, like, a huge part of these conventions, right? And I love seeing the costumes. Yeah. So we want the kids to come out for sure and... It's like I, I was talking to someone about like when does Halloween season start? Really, right? um, I would say, uh, I would say it's all year round, <laughs> but it's uh, I would say end of August really the build. So I think the timing your what you're doing is a really nice early sweet spot, mm -hmm. uh, and then it leads up to because you know costs of you know higher costume higher whatever just start to go up. So I think. I think it's it's definitely the beginning of September, or possibly August. Um, for me, I I feel it now because of this festival that I run. It's like it, it's all encompassing, so it starts as soon as I send that, put that first teaser trailer out for the whole thing. Um, but um, yeah, I, I absolutely love it from 
thinking about what I'm going to watch on Halloween to where I'm going to be, what I'm going to drink on Halloween, that kind of thing, you know, because I know the first thing that's going to be playing is Fright Night, and everything else is based around that, you know, so that first Fright Night, everything else can, you know, is extra padding. <laughs> yeah, and, and with it being really in the middle of September, it's like, that's when a lot of kids get their costumes or they're making them, right? And when I was in, like, I used to have, like, elaborate costumes when I was younger. Like, I mean, like, like movie perfect Ninja Turtle costumes and we'd have like four friends or like then it would be like movie perfect killer costume like it was awesome right? and don't be able to, like you only really wear it that one time and or the day before you get to wear it to school or something so it's it's nice to like I, I also am the same as you man like at the end of August it's like hey nothing but scary stuff man. yeah just stick to the let's keep the holiday spirit going so I don't so Mar- Miranda how do you feel about uh, Halloween is it your favorite kind of um, time of the year for me, it's it's my Christmas. That's why I say my wife understands that. Yeah, and it's more important. It's more important to Christmas than me. It's when I really make the effort with the decorations and all of that. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think? Uh, when do you think Halloween uh, starts? I am definitely one of those people where it's Halloween year round. I currently have my nieces and nephews staying with me for a while, and they're like. Auntie, your house is so creepy. Um, and I've actually had to take down <laughs> some of my decor for my partner's daughter because it actually like scared her. I didn't realize that she wasn't using my bathroom for a few months because like my decor in there freaked her out so much. Um, yeah. Like I'm definitely going hard. Um, September 1st, I'm putting up all my decorations outside. It's just, I've procrastinated it in previous years I've bought my own house and I haven't really been able to decorate as much as I want so I've accumulated all the stuff so yeah but I'm definitely I am Halloween year round kind of spooky house but officially September 1st is when like Halloween season <coughs> yeah that's that's awesome um, I live on um, I live on an army base um, but they've sold a third of the uh, houses to people that aren't part of the army, so it actually feels like it's a, its own community. There's a, a fenced area where all the weaponry is and that kind of thing, and then then there's so on most streets you've got either army officers, police officers, or solicitors that got that kind of thing, and it seems to be that Halloween is when everyone turns to a freak on this area, which is fantastic because I absolutely love it. So this street actually looks like Haddonfield. Um, nice. from Halloween so I've got this grand idea at one point of of shooting something during Halloween for a film on this street but it's kind of you know long in gest- gestation so uh, that'll happen at some point uh, but yeah I have like glow in the dark skeletons that I I try and do kind of demented things with my decorations to kind of freak people out like um like I hang the skeleton, the neon skeleton from the tree, that kind of thing, you know. So it's not just stuck on somewhere. Yeah. It's trying to twist. It's really trying to twist it. I, I, um, even my little dog. Even... No, go ahead. Oh no, no, you go on. I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt you in a minute. So even my little dog. I've got this little witch's hat. I put on her. She hates it. Um, but yeah, she absolutely hates it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I try and do as much as I can, and like very similar to yourself, we we bought this house a few years ago, and <laughs> we were very optimistic at having it finished. We gutted the entire house. We you know did so much work on it, and uh, we discovered things about this house. We, we were kind of a bit horror based. Like there's a cabinet behind where the bed is upstairs. And I asked my next door neighbour, who was part, of, her husband was part of the army. Oh yeah, that's where all the soldiers would keep all their weapons. So there's things built into the house for the soldiers. So it's very, very unusual. Um, but yeah, I try and have as much fun as possible during <laughs> Halloween. I try and shoot stuff, but the festival takes over everything for mm-hmm. me, and I lose a lot of that. You know, community passion and love for it a little bit because of uh, I'm just doing far too much work, um, and then I've got to weigh up whether whether I'm going to do it again t- in two years. And it just depends on sponsorship or involvement of other people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, like, I I do all the marketing and everything. Like, I literally do everything, and two hours every day is is far too much for an extra thing that doesn't pay anything. So 
it's it's pulls you all different directions, you know. Yeah. It definitely sounds like a passion oh, project. Know. And it's hard <laughs> it's hard to when you're so invested in doing something that is so horror Halloween based and then there's always so much going on in like October anyways, Halloween wise, and then trying to make that time for yourself to do your own stuff, that's hard. Yeah. Um what I've not mentioned this to anyone online or anything, so this is a little bit of a a uh, little bit of a uh, possible trade secret. But next year, I might be in Canada for Halloween to do uh, some interviews with some filmmakers and stuff. So um, it's not going to be a festival next year, but I'm going to have, have a have a bit of a jolly and and do some stuff in uh, in Canada next year. So whereabouts? Uh, that should be fun. All over. Um, I'm going to go anywhere and everywhere. Probably Toronto based mainly, um, but anywhere around there, Richmond, that kind of thing. Nice. Like, have you have you been here before? Never, never. And you picked Toronto. Well, I think that's where people I know live. So, Jeez. I'm I'm open mind. I I went to Russia on my own ten or twelve years ago. So, I'm, I'm I'll do anything and everything in terms of having a good time and meeting people and having fun. So, um, so yeah. If it's if it's something that you're doing next year, if you're doing this next year, I might you know. Uh, possibly be involved in person if that if that's of interest. Yeah, of course, dude. Yeah. When you come in, are you doing all the planned out, or are you just working on it? Uh, no, it's 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 pretty much going to happen in October or possibly September, October. So um, I haven't nothing's plotted out. Fl flights haven't been booked or anything yet, but it's it's definitely going to happen. You bringing the wife? Absolutely gonna... Um, probably, yeah. But when she realizes it's going to be a work thing as well as fun, she might not want to do it. So I don't know. I don't know yet. That's great. I think you'll have lots of we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I probably won't be prepared for the weather. <laughs> October's not too bad. Yeah, October's. Yeah? Oh, yeah. that's good. Especially if you're down yeah. south, um, it's not that bad. Not yet. November 1st, that's when it'll definitely take a turn. Um, yeah. Like, well, like four hours... Four hours isn't too bad for me because four hours for me now is I could drive to the capital of Wales, Cardiff, and that's about four hours. Like all those memes in Halloween where it's like the kid's Spider-Man and it's like, oh, I'm Spider-Man for Halloween and he just has a snowsuit on. That's I, There's a lot of Halloweens like that in Canada. Yeah. Like it's It gets cold near the end, but like you're look, probably looking at, I don't know, like between 5 and 15 degrees Celsius in October. Yeah. It can drop though if it gets cold. Well, I I don't know what I don't know about YouTube, but I run hot anyway. My general temperature is there. Yeah. Okay. So like when before, like two hours before we were uh, due to meet, I had one beer, had one bottle of Corona, and I just passed out because my my heat just elevated. I just went just zonked out. So. <laughs> No, I I had to chase uh, my dog down for a second. So before you got on, I was just in here sweating. I was just like. I did. I run hot constantly. <laughs> I hate doing anything, man. I just run hot constantly. Whenever I have to like meet someone or do an interview, I'm like, oh, are you nervous? No, this is just normal duck. Yeah, I've got this. Um, I'll show you this. I got this floor fan from a warehouse. I bought this online. Um, it's because I get too hot when I'm working, so I use this. Yeah, that's what I have going on right here. Because it's just like I'm. I'm sweating now. It's what ten past eleven at night, and I'm just roasting. Um, I was hoping like, of all the lights. I had to set it up with the mic, but I had to have my fan too, just like pointed right up, so I had to make <laughs> sure it wasn't hitting the microphone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, is there anything that I can help pot out on uh, social media that'll help you? Have you got any posts planned and that kind of thing? When does when does this come out? Is this this week or next? This next. Um, this will be Wednesday next week. So, what's that? The eighth, something like that. To the I think that we're by yeah, that point uh, we've we're planning on announcing almost everything at that point. I I think so. Yeah. So I we could potentially uh, send you something your way. I know Doug has put together a bunch of really great social media posts for us because we're slowly just um, putting out the, the the vendors, the guests, the the films we're showing, and all of that. So we probably might we'll have something to send your way. 
Yeah. Um, are you? Do you kind of use any um, collaborators? That you kind of, you know, when you tag people in your social media on Instagram, you can invite to be a is it collaborator? I just saw that feature. Um, I don't know if that's new, but I yeah, just saw yeah. it this week. I've never, I haven't noticed that before. But uh... that that's a really, really useful feature because. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. You, you, you've seen Douglas the the artwork I've put out for people's films. Yeah. Um, so what I've done is each time I've put one of those posts out, I've invited the actual filmmaker to be a, a collaborator, and then basically it posts exactly the same post on their account, but it's a joint post. So if you if you can get someone that's popular to add that to their account, it those numbers, those likes, will be on your account as well because it's exactly the same post. It's not like a copy. Oh, I didn't, uh, oh, I didn't even know you can do that. that. Learn something new. Yeah, it's a really useful tool. So, so one of the one of the um, the filmmakers that um, uh, submitted a film called Long Pig, he he just does kind of music music uh, video stuff and really kind of high end stuff um, uh, through a, through cinematography. And he posted it. He said, I can't post it for long. He posted it for a week. He deleted it off his account because we had agreed on that. And then those likes and everything from all the people that followed him started to, you know, all those likes stayed on the post on my account. Um, so it's a really powerful tool if you can yeah. send it to people that have got a lot more followers and that kind of thing. Okay. That's yeah, I sort of hope when we start doing the guest announcements, they can uh, start pumping this up for us too. So, yeah, like I, like I said with Rebecca Kennedy and her introducing her film, I definitely would like to get that out more now that you're getting this collab thing i was thinking that yeah well, yeah super i'll useful. definitely use that function because all of our social media is brand new like within the last week we've made yeah. everything so yeah so it's something where when we were coming up with this we were almost it, there, there was kind of a bit of hesitation like should we even do it this year should we wait till next but we figure we'll do what we can this year which has been it's great what we've put together. And so for next year, we can plan even yeah. bigger and better. And we'll have that following by that point. And we can, we have these social medias where we can put out Absolutely. things throughout the year and um, remind people that something's coming up. So you always have to start small social media. That's just how it is. Oh, absolutely. Like when, when I started my own, um, uh, the, the, the isolation film festival uh, and the uh, hellbound festival, uh, once you have that first the first version in, it's like you just keep building on top. It's like the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you've either of you have ever created DVD menus before. You know, like DVD Studio Pro or anything like that. You ever built no. menus? Yeah, for like you know, my when, yeah for fun though, like my own burning software. And you know, like you have to make the links to go back, and when it mm -hmm. when the video the video element finishes, you go back. Social media and all those accounts are exactly that. It's just mapping everything and having this huge thing, you know. Um, so, like Linktree, Linktree's your friend if you've not used it. Um, it's an amazing thing that's part of Instagram, and it it just everything, all the analytics are there and everything. So, it's super useful. And I'm trying to add to it all the time, but then when you realise, oh, I can do this great idea, but this great idea takes twelve hours of your week up. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, so. Um, that's yeah. the thing with us too like i'll feel like there's days i just send marin and stuff that's so overwhelming because i'm like for the next four hours i'm just going to sit here and that's all i'm going to do so i don't have to <laughs> do this anymore in the coming time that i have because like you're right it just starts to consume you yeah you'll have you'll have a uh um there'll be like a melancholy or something after the event's finished though you'll kind of miss you'll miss the energy of it um but then you, some elements, you're like, yeah, thank God that's over. It's the same thing with making films, man. You're you're doing it and you're getting ready to do it. Then you do it and it's all great. And then it's over and you're kind of just like, oh man, like it was stressful, but I, I miss it completely. Like it's yeah. it's the same thing. You just get this feeling like I don't know. I start getting restless if my days aren't filled as much as they should be sometimes when I'm not working on stuff. So it's nice to have that. But you're right though. Things just start taking over real quick. Are you uh, are you working on any kind of short films uh, recently or uh, this year at all? I, I was going to talk to you, but so actually, no, no, I had a plan though. So one of the events we did for Sudbury, uh, the Indie Cinema, was a garage sale, and they had like this fifties hair curler seat. Man, it had like, the cigarette ashtrays in the side. It was awesome. 
So I was like, I'm taking this thing because I'm going to make a sci-fi body horror-esque film with this. I'm going to go virtual. I was, I'm really big in virtual reality lately. So I was like, I'm going to make some kind of like virtual reality short. And then I started doing this. And now it's just what I do. So I was I, I was definitely thinking about getting something done. But um, with this, and we're ramping up for next year for the next feature film. So it's just kind of constant, dude. Like I, I would love to take time to do something, but I don't even think I'm going to get around to it. This has been fantastic. I'm, I'm going to go go and watch the end of uh, Better Call Saul now. Oh, I'm going to go watch the movie, too. I, uh, you've got me interested. It's, it, it's yeah. It's the... It, for anything else, it's the the photography, the way it's filmed, the writing and storytelling is masterful. Absolutely. You don't masterful. have time. You have to get this event going. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's it, yeah. And and Douglas, I love the t shirt, man. I love the t shirt. Thirty uh five year anniversary then. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Oh, that's such a violent film. And it probably has one of the best explosions in any cinema in any film. You know, the petrol station. Yeah, oh, yeah, when he comes walking out. I know, this is my little RoboCop table. I have all my RoboCop stuff here. I'm a, it's my favorite film. It's my, I, when you asked me what got me into horror movies too, that was one of the films my brother showed me where I was just like, that toxic guy yeah. came out. And I remember my cousins running right over the room. So I was like, that was like the real first horrific experience I've had with film was RoboCop. But yeah, I, I watched that film probably three, four times a year. Dude, I love it. Yeah. Um, you, I, I realized like i think october yeah halloween last year that my wife is the perfect person for me because she told me her favorite horror film is lost boys and randomly like a few weeks later um i think a few weeks after we met and she knew i love films oh have you got a copy of robocop can we watch robocop i was like yeah you're the girl for me <laughs> yeah do you want to marry me i was gonna say <laughs> yeah that's like a once in a lifetime situation like i it, <laughs> It's weird how much people can bond over movies. It's like my, my partner is like, she's Russian, so she doesn't have the biggest knowledge of American movies. But then sometimes she'll just be like, hey, oh, she's like, oh, when I was, uh, this is what else got me in the Hellraiser thing. She's like, when I was in Russia, um, they used to have a TV with the VHS and someone would put it in a room and charge like five rubles to come in and watch this film. And she was like, that was one of the first movies I watched. And I was like, really? I was like, She's like, yeah, I was really young. I don't remember it. And then I was watching her with her, and she's just like, I don't remember all the sex stuff, but I really <laughs> like this movie. And I was like, this is why we are together. <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, before we go, there's a scene in that where I can't remember the designer of Robocop, what he's called, but he's got, I think, two prostitutes between him, and he's snorting cocaine. Mm, cocaine. Off them. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing about that, Miranda, is. I remember that when I was a child. <laughs> it just stuck with me. I'm like, what is this? What's going on? I don't understand. You don't get it. And then when you're older, you're like, oh, oh, should I have seen that? Yeah. <laughs> That's happened to me one too many times. Whenever I watch a movie when I'm older, I'm just like, I watched Copycat from 95 yesterday with Scorny Weaver. And I was just like, why was I watching this when I was 10? Yeah. Who, who's responsible for raising me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's crazy how how films stick with you. Absolutely, but yeah, this is this has been great. And yeah, anything you want me to post, just let me know. I'm I'm really happy to help you guys out. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate it. We'll definitely be nice meeting you. I appreciate yeah. this. See you later. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>